Welcome back to another Mech Tech Tech. Today we're going over another custom build. This one is for Bernard, Ginger Sculptor from Wilds of Eldraine. A food golem lord offering up to uh, plus two, plus two, and trample to each of our food and golems. He goes a step further by allowing you to exile your non-token creatures that die in order to create 1-1 one, one food golem copies of those creatures. Before we dive on in, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button for me. Don't forget to hit that bell to make sure that you never miss an episode. Today's episode is dedicated to Joshua Ritter. Joshua, you rock. So what's the game plan here? Well, we're looking to abuse ETB triggers and token doubling effects to push our Ginger Sculptor to his absolute limits. As usual, we're going to break up our cards into several categories, including card draw, ramp, removal, token doublers, and some key cards to protect our board. Let's start with ramp. Ramping is a great way to thin out the deck and play ahead of curve, and that's what we're looking to do. Burnish Heart tops this list with a few key things going for it. Starting off, we have a relatively low cost to cast at 3 mana. They also have the ability to sacrifice themselves for 3 more mana, allowing us to search up 2 basics, putting them into play. This self sack outlet is going to work wonders with our commander, giving us a new copy that's a little stronger, but can also sacrifice itself in order to ramp us even further ahead. Coiling Oracle walks the line between ramp and card drop, but we're going to count them here. So in the ETB, we get to reveal the top card of our library. And if it is a land, we get to cheat that into play. Otherwise, we get to just draw the card. They luckily aren't sticking around very long as we're looking to chump lock with them to get that effect all over again. And have them come back as a 3-3 as opposed to a 1-1. Ferg Tilt follows up the Oracle and lets us pay 2 to remove counters from it in order to grab some basic lands. Once we've ramped enough, it'll just die on its own and come back as a stronger version as a 5-5, including the buff from our commander. Gallic Readers is here to uh, ramp us once per turn in the form of a treasure, and will get larger over time as, you know, it dies and comes back once again, making it a 3-3. Of course, it has some other abilities, including the ability to add counters to itself and gain us a little bit of life. Variety, the spice of life, we're here for it. Kodoma the East Tree is a powerful engine that is going to let us dump lands onto the field for free whenever our commander creates token copies of our fallen creatures. Lotus Cobra happens to work wonders for that tree and effectively doubles the mana that we're getting from each of those new lands for the turn. Sakura Tribe Elder, better known as Steve, is another self-sack outlet that's going to let us just grab lands on his way out and he'll come back stronger than ever as a 3-3. Solemn Simulacrum, aka Sad Robot, is also pulling double duty, grabbing us a land on ETB, and drawing us a card as he dies. So again, another card that we're really looking to just chump lock with, have him recurred by our commander, Chef's Kiss. Tireless Provisioner is here to combo off hard with Kodama of the East Tree, but should be getting us at least one treasure per turn. Topiary Stomper is also grabbing us lands on ETB, and although they'd be a little weaker as a food golem, we love them just the same. Urza, High Lord Artificer, is creating some powerful constructs on ETB, and allows all of our artifacts, which includes all of our new food golems, to uh, ramp us. Then we move into some more traditional ramp in the form of Cultivate, Farseek, Kodama's Reach, Nature's Lore, and Rampant Growth. Don't worry, we still have some Man Rocks to go over in the form of Arcane Signet, Azorius Signet, Obelisk of Bant, Selesnius Signet, Simic Signet, Soul Ring, Talisman of Curiosity, Progress, and Unity. As far as ramping artifacts go, we are also running Ashdod's Altar to play some big spells by sacking our creatures that haven't been foodified yet. Our last piece of ramp in the deck is a Commander All-Star in the form of Smothering Tithe, taxing our opponents and getting more mana than we know what to do with. With what could be considered too much ramp out of the way, let's draw some cards, starting off with Tribute to the World Tree. Our Commander is making 1-1 one, one creatures that are actually 3-3 three, three creatures thanks to the boost that he gives them, and this is going to keep our hand full and able to respond to what our opponents are doing. 
We aren't done drawing cards off of Creatures ETBing just yet with Kindred Discovery. We're declaring Golems, and every time our commander procs, bam. New card in hand. Elemental Bond is basically just another copy of Tribute to the World Tree, though much easier to cast, so again, whenever our commander goes off, we get new cards in hand. Thopter Shop is fun tech for this deck. All of our Food Golem copies are in fact artifacts, although this is only going to trigger once per turn. It's also a token generator on our side of the field, a theme that we're definitely going to be leaning into. Speaking of leaning into tokens, we have Staff of the Storyteller. We're going to be creating tokens on a pretty consistent basis, and this is going to let us draw a card per turn for doing so. Of course, no token strategy would be complete without Idol of Oblivion. Moving into our creatures, we have Tireless Tracker, who again combos off with Kodama to potentially create infinite clues, which we could use to draw a ton of cards. Thought Monitor is never going to cost us anywhere near 7 to cast, and giving us 2 cards on ETB. When they die, they again come back just a little stronger. Spirited Companion is up next, and a great early play to dig through our deck a little. And like all of our tiny boys, is going to come back a little stronger once they've been taken out. Rumor Gatherer is here to offer card selection via scrying, and allow us to draw a card once per turn if we see 2 creatures hit our side of the field, which shouldn't be too hard. Mole Drifter is here to be evoked, and when we do, we're going to get them back as a 3-3 flying trampling elemental food golem. Try saying that ten times fast. And we end up drawing four cards. Elvish Visionary is basically a green version of our Spirited Companion, here to ETB giving us cards. Jump Block coming back as a 3-3, and bam, another card. Cloud Blazer is here, offering up some life gain with those two cards, and also pops back up to be a little stronger should they be taken out. Last up in the card draw engine is Agent of Treachery, who lets us steal a permanent on ETB. And if we have a token doubler on the field with our commander when they die, let us steal even more things. And at that point, we get to be rewarded with card draw for having stolen multiple cards. We actually only have two pieces of removal in the deck, but as they are both creatures, we will get to double up on their abilities. Starting off this list, we have Acidic Slime, who works as a fantastic blocker given his death touch, but also acts as strong removal on ETB, being able to hit an artifact and shaman or land. Following up our slimy friend, we have Hornet Queen, which leans into the token synergy that this deck is going for, and is five bodies in one, all of which have death touch. We'll have a solid wall that no one will really want to attack into, leaving us free to swing out with our creatures without having to worry too much about that crackback. Speaking of token synergy, we have a few ways to generate extra tokens in this deck, and at the top of that list is Primal Vigor. This card is a little group hug, which isn't generally my style, but I think it's okay in this instance, as, you know, we're definitely focusing on tokens in, like, a little bit on counters, and I don't think it's very likely that our opponents are going to be doing the same. Parallel Lives, by contrast, is just for us and no one else. It's a little cheaper to cast, though it isn't going to be helping us with those counters. Doubling Season follows that up and is the kind of token and counter doubling that's just for us in this deck. Unlike Primal Vigor, we're the only ones getting to take advantage of it, and it's putting in double duty, hitting both tokens and counters. This next effect isn't doubling our tokens per se, but it is doubling our ETB effects, which is a big focus of the deck, and that's Panharmonicon. I'm talking extra cards, extra food, extra clues, treasures, counters of any kind, creature tokens, you name it, we're doubling it. Definitely an all-star in the deck. Our token doubling isn't done yet, though, as we have Anointed Procession to double up our token production. And all of these doubling effects get to stack, leading to massive amounts of new tokens on our side of the field. We have one more doubling effect left in the form of Second Harvest, and while this is a one-time use sort of thing, we are able to do it at instant speed, which is a nice little surprise for our opponents. We have one more way to create extra tokens, and that's Nesting Dovehawk. At the beginning of our combat, we get to create a token copy of a token we already control via Populate. When Creature Tokens ETB, Nesting Dovehawk also gets larger, and with a number of token doubling effects, Nesting Dovehawk can really pack a punch. Even better, though. Should they die while our commander is out on the field, they come back as a token themselves and can target themselves with that Populate effect, allowing us to really double up that Populate trigger each turn. 
With all these creatures on the board, our opponents are going to be itching to board wipe, and we need ways to protect ourselves. Luckily for us, we have a few ways of doing just that, starting with Unbreakable Formation, which can be used offensively or defensively. If we do it offensively, we get to pump all of our creatures up and give them Vigilance, letting them stand strong on defense. If we use it defensively, we get to dodge a board wipe. The fact that all of our creatures, that are tokens at the very least, have Trample granted from our commander really makes us like the choice to do this offensively super strong. Next up is Teferi's Protection, which lets us and all of our permanents phase out and potentially lets us win the game when no one has any time to rebuild. In a similar vein, we have Make a Stand, which is going to protect our creatures and give them a little bit of a boost with that plus one plus O. Oh. Last up is Heroic Intervention, which offers all of our permanents hexproof and indestructible for only two mana. So at this point, we have a ton of creatures, cards, and mana, but the game has gone on long enough, and we need to put an end to it. Lucky for us, we have a few ways of achieving this, starting with Cathar's Crusade, which is going to be passing out counters left and right to all of our creatures as another creature ETBs. With how explosive our token generation can be, our creatures are going to be able to steamroll anyone who dares to stand in our way. However, that effect pales in comparison to Moonshaker Cavalry our golden nightmare of the deck, which is going to pump our board based on how big it already is, and offer all of our creatures flying, making it difficult for most creatures to block them, allowing us to truly swing for the fences and take all of our opponents out at once. We'll give an honorable mention to Crater Hoof Behemoth, which has an effect very similar to Moonshaker Cavalry. Should we be running both in the deck? Probably. It certainly would make it a little more consistent, I think for now, though, we have enough card draw necessary that we're going to see most of our deck each game, so I'm not too concerned about it. But guys, that's the deck. As always, there's a link to the full deck list in the description below. For the cards that you're questioning being in here, were the cards that I overlooked? Is there a custom deck tech that you'd like to see in the future? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you're looking to get help on your own decks, or just want to sling some spells with me over on Spell Table consider joining the Discord. But until next time, guys, good luck with your builds.